Welcome back to Football News. Today we will be bringing you Ronaldo walks off Ten Hag. Did he actually want to keep Ronaldo? He said it in interviews and he wants to get the best out of him. But at the end of the day, he do not do it for a reason. He do not just walk off in the 89th minute, um, not celebrate for a reason. Ronaldo wanted to go, so whose fault does it lie with? Is it Ronaldo's fault, Ten Hag's fault, or is it the Glazers' fault for letting it escalate? Um, Rashford played really well. Um, instead of Ronaldo, and probably had a bigger impact on the game than what Ronaldo would have. I think he suits the system better. They don't put a lot of crosses into a box, Man United, um, because uh, they're a bit like Man City a couple of years ago, really, where they want to pass out, and they have the inverted wingers, and everything comes through the centre, um, and they like to control the ball in the centre, and that, Anthony and Sancho did well with that. But um, Rashford were good on and off the ball. Bruno Fernandes created nine big chances, um, created nine chances, I don't know if there were big chances, but created nine chances in that game, hopefully he's back to his best, um, and then, you know, we're going to brief, briefly talk about Newcastle, Almiron, Bruno Gomez, uh, Gary O'Neill's one ends at Bournemouth, and then a few other topics along the way, so let me know your thoughts on all the topics in the comments down below, let's get into it. So yeah, Ronaldo, where does this problem lie with? Well, he, he, he scored his 700th club goal this season. Um, he, he completed it this season, he didn't score 700 goals already. Um, only Harlan could do that this season. But um, yeah, I think Ronaldo's obviously a great player. Um, an an all-time great and probably one of the best of all time. I'm not going to get into that debate, but... Um, I, I, I like both Ronaldo and Messi. I don't like to say I prefer this player more or this player more. I'm not saying on the fence either. I just would rather everyone just appreciate them all. Um, but talking about best player of all time, we're going to get into a, one of them later on as well. So two of them. And it's not Miguel Almond, who is playing really well at the moment. But yeah, we've already briefed on Rashford, briefed on Ronaldo. I think it's the Glazers' fault because they didn't get rid of Ronaldo in the summer. And Ten Hag quite obviously wanted to. He didn't say in interviews. He's obviously deflected that. But obviously they wanted to keep him because of shirt sales or whatever. They wanted to keep Ronaldo. And um, they could have got rid of him. And then maybe brought in a couple few, uh, a different striker. They're interested in Rafael Leal. And um, he would probably be a better alternative to Ronaldo. He'd fit the system a bit better. And... Um, yeah, they, they need to back the manager, and you know they didn't do that this summer, and we'll see what happens there. But I do think it lies in the Glazers' hands. Rashford had a good game, like a brief Don and Bruno. So we'll get into the Newcastle game. They won one nil in a review, but um, these football news today's are covering a bit of what I would do in a review in a week because it's too many videos. It gets too messy. But these are Premier League predictions coming later on. Um, so if you want to watch that, please do. But um, yeah, Al Almoron, fantastic player uh, this season. He's got more confidence, he's trying different shots, scoring some right goals, he's shutting Jack Grealish up. Um, and then Bruno Gomez, what an impact he's having. He finds pockets of space, brilliant range of passing. He he's quite snappy as well. Um, not to referees, unlike the other Bruno, but he's snappy in challenges, uh, tenacious. And he's got a really good long shot on him. Again, probably man a match for Newcastle. He could go on to be a bit of a legend for him if he stays for all these years as they're building their way up the ladder of success. So, good player again. Really good game for Newcastle. Everton, three defeats in a row. Frank Lampard, maybe in a bit of jeopardy. But we'll see what happens with that. Um, but a lot of one nils last night. And um, I, f I think they're a clean sheet in every game. No, apart from Wolves Palace, they're a clean sheet in every game this week. So, um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But talking of um, ones coming to an end with uh, Lampard and his ones continuing to be uh, dwindled, Gary O'Neill's one ends at uh, Bournemouth. I mean, six games unbeaten since that uh, Liverpool thrashing. They, they lost 1 0 to Southampton. They probably were the better team. But no matter what happens, it, it were like Carrie class season at um, Manchester United. No matter what happens, he's gone on such a good run. If they now bring in a manager, he do not get impacted. I, I think that if Bournemouth go down, he will probably become their manager next season. And um, he will get a championship job next season because what he's done in the short term as caretaker, unlike Steve Davis at Wolves, who I think. 
has played a decent brand of football, has turned it around a little bit, but you can clearly see they need a better manager in. Whereas Carrick and uh, O'Neill and different caretakers, um, what they've done in that short spell has got them another job, and I think um, they, they could build on this now. But yeah, they were a better team. Southampton get a, a win, but want a pretty win. But uh, Ralph Arson, who will, you know, that Southampton team will fight for him. They will, um, if they're up against it, they will try the best to try keep him in a job. The the fought the fought for him in that game. Uh, one 0 win for Southampton and uh, Bournemouth won't come to an end. So I think they will need to look for a manager now. But Gary O'Neill will probably stay in football, whether it's at Bournemouth or whether he does get a job in the Championship, because I think that's open to him now. Um, so moving on to other football news, touching on Michael Carrick there, he's set to be the Bur Borough manager, Middlesbrough. Uh, they desperately need a new manager. be interesting to see how it goes. Um, obviously he originated up there, I don't know if you're a Newcastle fan or Middlesbrough, I think I'm on Newcastle to be honest with you. But um, yeah, I mean... The, We'll, we'll see how it goes, but like I said with Gary O'Neill, he's earned that appointment because of his caretaker role, um, and I do think he could be a good manager, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, Chelsea, every day I do this now, they're getting linked for someone. Oshiman, uh, Declan White and Bellingham. Always seems to be English players, doesn't it? Or pl players linked to Graham Potter, so not a lot of thought process goes into it, but we'll just see uh, come the summer. Um, and then on to what I mentioned before, Pele um, is the player I'm going to talk about for a brief few minutes, a uh, brief few seconds actually. Arsenal, Barcelona and Real Madrid um, want the next Pele. Um, he's 16 years of age and he's Endrick. I forgot who he plays for, but apparently he's the next Pele. I mean, but Arsenal seem to be doing this. They've got that Marquinhos guy. Um, I'm sure they've got Martinelli from the Brazilian league. Hopefully for them, Marquinhos works out well. Martinelli's worked out really well. Uh, Man City got Jesus from there, and Kaike, who not a lot will have known of, and won't know who Kaike is, um, go Google him, he looks like an interesting player, they got him last season, um, he might have gone out on loan somewhere, but um, he's an interesting player, and it'll be interesting to see how he forms into that Manchester City team, because he will break in, um, so it'll be interesting to see how this Hendrick goes, um, maybe in a couple of years time, you might go, well, that balls to it guy was... Um, talking about him, he, 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 he used to play for a Brazilian team, anyway, we'll see how he goes, but um, it probably is one of those where he turns out really crap, and then he ends up um, earning a living in the Brazilian fifth league, um, that's probably what will happen, or he might turn into an Earl in Haaland, but uh, we'll have to see, Barcelona to stay on their front, they're monitoring Diego Dallo, who's been on great form for Manchester United, and I think if he stays there, he, he, he will cement his um, place in that starting lineup um, if he can continue his form that's why Barcelona are monitoring him um, I think he would be open to going to Barcelona and he would massively improve them um, but I think he's the right back Man United have needed for quite a few years and you're saying that about quite a few players oh he's the player we've needed he's the player we've needed that's all you're hearing on social media but that shows how poor or crap they've been um, but um, yeah, he's a, he's a really good player. I put him in my combined 11 for the Spurs game, and he had a really good game again. But um, staying on the Barcelona front as well, uh, Ruben Neves has been offered to Barcelona. We'll see how that escalates, but I don't think it's much, really. Um, Michael Beale then, on the Wolves front, like I touched on them with Steve Davis. Um, Michael Beale, the QPR manager, is um, he's probably going to Wolves. It's all but done. Wolves will have to pay one million for a release clause in him. I've, I don't know where QPR are in the Championship, but I know they're at least in the top half. They're playing good football under Michael Beale, and um, I was going to say Ian Beale, and I can't really imagine him being a football manager. Um, it would be a weird crossover. But anyway, I um, I've seen them. They play some good football, and I think that they could. He, he's got the potential to be a good manager. That's what I'm trying to say. But I'm just going to say. It. It, it's wrong if he goes to Wolves because QPR have given him the opportunity to give them give him his first stint in management. They give him the platform. He was just an assistant at Aston Villa. They've said, "Here you go. You can have a, a few years with us. You can blend your team in. We've give you this chance." And then he's just going um, to a bigger club. 
Now, it, I'm going to say it, I think it would go wrong. I don't think it would work out at Wolves with him. Um, first of all, because he isn't Portuguese. But, um, no, but the thing is, he's a young manager who's just learning his trade. He's inexperienced, didn't manage in the Premier League before. And I do feel like he should stay at QPR till the end of the season and give him that because of the loyalty. But there's no loyalty in football anymore. There's no loyalty in the world anymore. But I feel like he needs to give him that because he's been given the opportunity to manage his first football club and then he goes and stabs them in the back. Um, hopefully I don't get stabbed in the back because it would mean that someone would be hiding behind my chair and that's literally the wall where my chair and uh, or someone coming in from the wall and uh, hurting the head on the bricks that are, uh, um, they're not real bricks, it's a wallpaper but the bricks that are behind it that lead into someone's house. Um, but anyway, what I'm trying to say is, it's stab backing, uh, back, 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 backstabbing, that's it, it's backstabbing, if, if he goes because they've given him the opportunity and then he's just betraying them and saying, oh thanks for that, and now it, it's like if you give a homeless person um, five quid, right, and you feel like you've done a good job, not all of them do it, the, the, there's a lot of genuine homeless people and I do feel sorry for them, and um, you know, it's sad that they haven't got a place to live and in the winter months it's going to be hard for them. But at least they don't have to go through a winter blackout like we may have to, I'm joking, obviously. But um, you give them the £5 and then they go, oh, thank you. And then they just go off and um, spend it on something else um, that you wouldn't want them to be spending it on. Um, but yeah, I don't know where I've gone with that. But basically he's backstabbing them if he leaves and I don't think it would work out. Moving on to the last topic, which is Saha. He's keen on a move to Liverpool, but he's been linked with Arsenal, Chelsea, and I think Tottenham as well. Um, does he deserve to play in a, for, for a top six club? Yes. Uh, would he work would, in that system? I think so. But would they get the best out of him? No. Um, Zaha against Wolves was fantastic. On, on, against Leeds, who were too far, not Leeds, whoever they played, Leicester, that way. Too far on the left. And um, against Wolves, came in the centre, got involved more, did a few skills. But the thing with Zaha is, I briefed on him yesterday. Because of his age now, he's getting more responsible. And he's got youth, um, young players behind him and in front of him. And he's not doing as, he's even said, I'm not doing the skills or dribbling as much as I probably um, should, you know, to get the best out of me. But to get the best out of the team, I'm doing what I need to and when. And he's a brilliant footballer. He does deserve the move, but would he be good? Um, would he be as good? I don't think he would. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Have a good one.